the uh, body of Molly Tibbetts has been discovered. Now, Molly Tibbetts, you may recall, is a University of Iowa student who went missing about five uh, weeks ago, July 18th. She went for a jog in her hometown of Brooklyn, Iowa, and never came back. There has been a massive investigation underway in this tiny, tiny town. And today we uh, received the grim news that her body was discovered. We had some shots up a little bit earlier of the area where the body was discovered. It just looks sort of like a lonely a country road with a field in the area. And earlier, Vlad and I spoke with CBS News correspondent Adriana Diaz about the latest developments. Adriana has been following this case since the very beginning. Adriana, thank you so much. What you, I hope you can do for our audience is just take us back to the very beginning because we've been talking a lot about next steps as far as the investigation is concerned with our former, with our colleagues who are former FBI uh, agents. But just remind our viewers what may have happened to Molly five weeks ago. And you've spent a lot of time there on the ground in Brooklyn, Iowa. You've spoken to family members and members of the community. Just give us a sense of what they have been going through over the last five weeks. Well, Vlad, this community has just been rallied around this search effort for Molly Tibbetts. Her photo is wallpapered all around Brooklyn, Iowa. That's her hometown. There are missing posters on every storefront, sometimes two on a single storefront. People have signs in their yards and everyone, you know, people wearing T-shirts with her photo on them and the phone number to call if anybody knows anything. It's something I've never seen before in my life. And this is such an effort because her, the, the circumstances around her disappearance were just so mysterious that everybody was just baffled about what could have happened to this girl. She went out on a jog over a month ago. She was a runner. She jogged uh, almost daily. She would jog almost every day in her town of Brooklyn, Iowa. Uh, a few people saw her on that jog that day, and then she disappeared. When we interviewed her father, he said, poof, she was gone. Mm. So investigators tell us she was wearing a Fitbit. She had her cell phone. They were hoping to use that location data to track where she had gone. Uh, when we first went to Brooklyn, Iowa, they told us that they had a timeline uh, based on that information, but that at some point the timeline stops and that the Fitbit and the cell phone were off or dead. So they, they had some information, not enough. Uh, they fanned out in the area. They were focusing on five key locations. One was like the neighborhood hangout in town at the car wash, a couple of rural areas, the house where she was last staying, her boyfriend's house. Um, but we really didn't hear that there was any kind of break in the case. Uh, we spoke to investigators just last week and they said, you know, we don't have anything to report. We're still searching. The FBI is here. They're helping us. Uh, but we are still we're still going through all of the tips we're getting. We're revisiting tips. There were hundreds of tips that came in with information for Molly. Uh, this story, as you well know, has captivated the nation and people from coast to coast were trying to figure out ways to help. Um, the the conclusion to this story, this awful ending of this story is hard to believe for a lot of us. I think I almost thought we, you know, I don't I don't know what I thought. I, I you know, like her family, I, I was we were all hoping that she was still alive. And to get this news this morning that she's been found and that she's been found dead is just hard to believe. And we're heading to Brooklyn, Iowa um, as soon as we're we're done chatting here. And I know that the community is going to be broken. You know, Adriana, you talk about just how much this um, upset the town. Um, and I know that uh, police had been talking to several people. There was a, a farmer who sort of came under suspicion, at least by the media, because he seemed a little guarded. He, he had initially refused to take a polygraph test. Do you know if uh, law enforcement tested a variety of people who live in the town? Did other people take polygraph tests? We don't know if other people took polygraph tests. And we actually interviewed that farmer. Um, and that very morning, morning that we were at his house, he said, yeah, an FBI agent was just here asking me to take a polygraph test. And I, I said no. And I said, well, why, why refuse it if you have nothing to hide? He said, I just, don't, I just don't want to take it. There were reports afterwards that he had taken the polygraph test. But they were interviewing many witnesses. It wasn't just this one person. I think you know this, this farmer became a focus. Um, but there were other people who were being interviewed, we just didn't know about them because they just weren't talking to the media. Um, so we, we don't know if there are any suspects, um, if anyone's in custody, if she perhaps ran away and something happened to her. Uh, but we will hear from investigators late this afternoon and we hopefully will get more answers. 
You know, Adriana, I can hear the emotion, the raw emotion in your voice as you described um, the worst fears for this family, this community. And I understand, as we all do as reporters, that sometimes when you're working a story like this, as you were for so many weeks, uh, and you start to learn more about the person who's missing, and you start to understand uh, their family um, and get to know their family, that it can be difficult to report this story. But I'd like you to just share with us and our audience what you have learned from talking to Molly's uh, friends and family about who she was. because there's been a lot of reporting and I've seen in your pieces her father talking about what kind of a daughter she was what kind of a friend what kind of a neighbor she was uh, not just in that small community but also at the University of Iowa Vlad you're right I mean we've spoken to so many people about Molly that we almost felt like we knew her mm -hmm. um, everyone describes her as a light she would light up a room her father told me she felt the most comfortable in front of a crowd um, the woman in town who led this the effort to make posters and t-shirts for molly they had like a, a, a factory almost that they that they created in their store uh, she called me over one day and showed me uh, a video of molly giving a speech at a faith group meeting um, and she just was captivating she was dazzling she she uh, was uh, a champion in, st in speech competitions. She uh, would, would, you know, she, she was the light of a room, everyone told us. And her boyfriend told us when we spoke to him, you know, she didn't have any enemies. She was a friend to everyone. So that's why this was so hard for people. I mean, not only did we... Was, was a young woman missing, but, but who this young woman was, it was someone with no enemies, someone with, you know, so much in front of her, someone looking forward to so many things in her life. She was a sophomore in college. She uh, had just got a lease on her new apartment. Her mother told us that she had just ordered sheets from Target, and she said, I have the sheets, but I don't have the girl. So this is a, uh, this is a woman who was really, um, really just a force, uh, and, and everyone knew it. People who didn't even know her had heard so much about her that, that they felt like they knew Molly. Um, when we interviewed her father, he actually said, you know, I want to show you something, and he took me over to to where his things were, and he showed me a drawing that had been made of a photo of Molly when she was about two years old, uh, and it was beautiful and you know her father and her mother uh, and her brothers everyone just has love overflowing for her um, her father recently got remarried and his best man was Molly his best man was his daughter that was the kind of connection she had to her family it's heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, it is indeed. Um, and Adriana, I know that you're going to be getting on a plane and heading to Iowa uh, just as you wrap up with us. Thank you so much for your reporting. We will look to talk to you in the hours and days ahead. Uh, thank you again. We'll speak to you soon.